in a world filled with information. Where do you turn to get straight talk about retirement, investments, and your money? Lock it in to the longest-running financial talk show in Arkansas and let us help you build the bridge between information and application. Real financial change begins right here, and it starts with you. It's showtime! Good morning, everybody. The promise of safety and comfort. When it comes to your retirement, it can sound great, but it is not all it's made out to be. On today's show, exposing the false promises and how to avoid them. This is the Get Ready for the Future show. Hey, welcome aboard and welcome in to the Get Ready for the Future show. My name is Scott Inman, along with John Shrewsbury and Janet Walker. We are glad to have you with us in this last few days of March as we come into the uh, second quarter pretty strongly now and on today's show we're talking about well what we just talked about the false promises that are out there the, it is a promise of safety and comfort and you know I think it's important to point out at the get-go here John and Janet that we talk about uh, these types of things on our program a lot one investments being the magic bullet or the golden investment that is going to get you to your retirement dreams or the outcome you want hitting your retirement goals or or actually even advisors that talk about investments right out the get-go that that's the solution is this one special investment and that's really not true Uh, and we are education driven and we want to educate you today about some of those products some of those advisors and some of the false promises that can really turn out to be uh, detrimental to your retirement. The financial industry is flooded these days with people who want to give you advice about the latest and greatest thing, and you need to put all your money here because it's going to take you to the promised land and all of that. And we're going to try to cut through some of that. And with all due respect, the, most financial advisors are smart, and they they know exactly what they're doing, and and they really are. They do take a very valid approach to helping you with your finances. But there are some out there and they they are around and they've got lots of loud voices going on these days that really want to basically scare you into taking advantage of what they have to offer. And guys, I would point out to our listeners that it's not all about financial advisors either. Frankly, there are people out there giving what you as a consumer would consider to be financial advice when they are not technically financial advisors. They don't have the same, you would call them licenses, their their registrations. They don't have the same registrations that we as financial advisors do. And I think it's important for you to, to look behind the curtain, even on licensing, and understand what qualifications does this person have to be able to give me investment advice yeah i think it's important too you know you've heard that uh that term snake oil right that, that's a pretty yeah. derogatory term it originated back in the late 1800s uh when snake oil salesmen went around with a promise of cures or a promise to heal ailments with this with this ointment or this medicine that they had and i think so it would key in on that word promise what are they saying what is in the pitch and is it is what they are pitching really accomplishing what it says it's going to you know and the other part too is is depending on who you're dealing with uh it can be very difficult to to stay away from it i mean the 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 sales pitches out there are pretty hard pretty strong yeah and i don't think we've ever seen uh this ramp up like we have in let's say the last 10 or 15 years Uh, because when we had 2008 crop up uh, that fanned the flames of fear amongst people and a big downturn in the market and all that type of thing and then most recently uh, this time last year when the markets hit bottom at the end of March of uh, 2020 uh, as COVID-19 was rampantly uh, going across the United States uh, that uh, obviously stoked fear. And, you know, when you have fear, you make bad decisions. Mm-hmm. And these pitches at best uh, for so-called sleep insurance uh, are, or beating the IRS at uh, trying to avoid higher taxes and what have you, uh, at, at very best, uh, they can have your money exposed to risk that, uh, that you really don't really understand. And at worst, their prescriptions can lead to investment products that soon uh, you discover 
remember are a little bit like uh, the famous song from the Eagles, Hotel California. You mm-hmm. can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. And we're really talking about things that uh, we have seen, Janet, uh, in, in our time in the industry, these extended long periods of yeah. surrender penalties on fixed index annuities and things of that nature. Yeah, John, we've seen them over 20 year periods of time. So think about that if you at retirement age, let's say around 65, you get into something like that. Well, you're in there until you're over 85 years old, because we've seen them not just at 20 years, but beyond that 20 year marker. And so I'm sorry, but there's not a decision that you want to be tied to for that period of time financially. So you've really got to just just realize whatever your fear is, there's not one product that's going to alleviate your fears and be the right thing for you for however long, for the rest of your life. Scott, I think that you can really quickly identify uh, those products by people who pitch it as all the gains in the market and none of the risk. Well, if you're going to get all the big, uh, the positives of something and none of the negatives, I can tell you that that just does not happen. It it does not. You're not going to get all of the gains of the market and none of the risk. You still have some risk involved in it. You still have, you don't get all the gains in the market. Those gains are limited in those types of products. And so I think it is really one of the things that that is very hard for the consumer to sort through and understand, you know, okay, is this real or is this maybe just some smoke and mirrors that are going on in an effort to try to get my money? Guys, I'll share a story that happened with one of our clients, and this is this is a nationwide deal. Some of what we're talking about is more in our, our local market. Some of it's nationwide. This one in particular is a nationwide deal. It doesn't matter where you live. You might have heard something along these lines, and, and that is, you know, everything's going, you know, we're in a handbasket, so you need to buy gold because gold, gold's never gone to zero, and, and you need to get yours. And it's all, think about it, gold's never gone to zero. Well, you know what? Neither has the market it's it's okay they're selling on fear though that's what you have to realize so this lady i uh, was listening to you know all the commercials and advertising about it and decided i'm just going to call and learn more you know we're, we're education driven she's used to being able to call and ask questions and get education so she called these people who were selling gold and started asking questions and before she knew it they had her on the line with gen wealth in an attempt for them to move all of her assets to them and and use all of them to buy gold. Now, fortunately, our Gen Wealth team is very well trained and they knew this is not the norm. So they, the processor was wise enough to get an advisor on the line and kind of coach through. And then the client was going, oh my gosh, you know, how did we go from, I want to have some education to, all of a sudden they're ready to move everything. And and it's really a learning experience. And I think it's important for you to understand, you know, as a listener that you've got to be able to work with somebody who is educationally driven. They're not going to just say, okay, let's move everything today. That's never going to be in your best interest. Scott, I think it's important to point out that there's nothing inherently wrong with investing in gold. As a matter of fact, some of the things that we uh, invest in uh, here at GenWealth have elements of gold in them from time to time as the uh, investment managers deem that to be a good investment. But when you think about the fact that that gold is at the very high end of risk in terms of if you think about kind of the the progression it goes from balance to uh, growth and income to growth to aggressive growth to speculative the value of gold is speculative and it is only worth what somebody on the other side of the equation thinks it's worth and so when you think about investing all of your money in a speculative investment what you find is oftentimes people that are being lured into these investments are frankly people that are trying to be more conservative, mm-hmm. but they're being herded into more speculative, costly investments. Yeah, and people think about the stock market being volatile. Well, gold, the price of gold is yeah. pretty volatile too. That's what people yeah. forget. It, it, I think it's meant to be, or thought of rather, as a hedge, right? When the market's going down, gold's going up, but it doesn't always work that way. So right. gold is, as John said, speculative, and it is also volatile. That's just one of the promises of safety and comfort that are out there. We're exposing those false promises today on the Get Ready for the Future show. We'll dive in and go a little deeper when we come back from the break. So stay with us as this uh, near April Fool's Day edition, that's not by accident, of the Get Ready for the Future show continues right after this. 
At GenWealth, one of our standards is that we have a unified purpose. Now there's an internal aspect to that, and then there's an external aspect. All of us internally on the GenWealth team are working toward one purpose, but that purpose is to work with you, our clients, in whatever need you may have. John F. Kennedy said, efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. I believe that one of the reasons many people have trouble getting up and going to work on a Monday morning is that they don't have purpose and direction in what they're doing. But we do every day, every week, and that's your purpose. Whatever it is that you want to do in retirement, we're here to help you meet that purpose, which means you and the GenWealth team all together have a unified purpose. a burning question email info at get ready for the future.com with your name location and question to get a response on the air from the gen wealth team now back to the get ready for the future show exposing the false promises of safety and comfort when it comes to your retirement and your investments that's the subject of today's get ready for the future show we mentioned in the last segment guys about us being education driven there are a lot of great education resources on our website. You can go to getreadyforthefuture.com and find our blog. You can also follow us on social media. We are getting more and more active on social media. You can find us on Twitter by searching GenWealth FA or GenWealth Financial Advisors on Facebook. And we hope you're watching on Facebook today as we live stream uh, today on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. We're trying to get the message out, right? And today the message is about fear, basically. The fear that is pitched with this illusion of uh, safety and comfort in your finances and it's all about feelings it's really emotionally tied and we're going to dive into one of those fears now in this segment and that's the fear of tax increases and and everybody's got that i'll admit i've got that i think everybody would like to not see their taxes go up and pay more to the government and that of course is being talked about more and more now with the new administration and it's becoming more and more likely well, obviously, the Biden administration was very much on front street about their willingness and, and in fact, uh, pointedness about raising taxes. As a matter of fact, uh, just after they spent $1.9 trillion the other day, they now have come out and said, all right, now we've got to pay for that. So we're going to raise taxes on uh, people making over $400,000 a year. We're going to raise the capital gains taxes uh, for people making over $400,000 a year. But here is the, the truth about that. Now, that is, that is those facts and the facts fact that they've spent $1.9 trillion, plus all the other trillions that they spent earlier, uh, all the facts surround this, uh, you know, being that that the Biden administration is likely not going to raise taxes on most Arkansans. When you think about the average income in Arkansas, it's nowhere near $400,000 a year. And so those tax increases are, uh, at least those that are, are being talked about right now, are really not indicative of uh, being uh, harmful to people in Arkansas. So I wanted to make that point. But I also think that that this fear of higher taxes has really created this explosion of people that are really centering their pitch, Janet, on the fact that everybody's going to pay higher taxes. Y- yeah. And so again, it's a use utilization of a fear tactic to get people to come in and, and do business with them. Well, think through this for just a moment. The, the primary target of these conversations is what is in your 401k. Your 401k, for the most part, and yes, you may have some Roth money in there, but for the most part, your 401k money is going to be pre-tax money. So I want you to think about something for just a moment. You have had the advantage of getting a tax deduction over the years any time that you've made a contribution. You've had the advantage of the business contributing their match to your dollars, and those dollars weren't even put in by you in the first place, and they have not been taxed. So there's your money that you got a tax deduction 
commission on, and there's the business money that you received at no cost to you, and none of those dollars have been taxed yet. At some point, taxes must be paid. But here's how the pitch goes, all right? They're not focused on the advantages that you've had over the years, including the tax deferred growth, and none of those taxes have been paid. What they're focused on is, well, you have $700,000, and you're going to lose half of it to taxes. Okay, first of all, we're not pulling it all out at once, right? You're going to take an income stream a little bit at a time to supplement your Social Security. You're going to take that throughout your retirement. You're not going to take $700,000 out all at once because that would eat you alive in taxes because it would put you up into a higher tax bracket because you're taking more out all at once. That's not what the retiree does. And so, when you when you get people caught in this corner of fear and it's like, hey, taxes are going to kill you, well, where do you have to go? Keep in mind, these dollars have not been taxed. They have to be taxed at some point. And so to get you in a different tax situation, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And so their solution on this is really actually creating a disastrous problem that you do not have to face. John? Yeah, let's delve delve into this a little bit more, Scott. Uh, A pitch that we've run across is called the tax-free retirement. And there is a way to have tax-free retirement. You put all your money in a Roth IRA over the years, and then that's tax-free. Or you put your money into municipal bonds, and the interest on that is tax-free. As far as I know, those are the only two ways to have a tax-free retirement. But these pitches are targeted to people who have large 401k plans. And one of these pitches actually involves taking the money out of your 401k plan over a span of, say, four or five years and depositing that money, get this, into cash value life insurance and then borrowing the money out of the life insurance policy because a policy loan is not a taxable event, then you have tax-free income. Let's, well, take, let's take this bit by bit. Yeah. It started with, you said, taking it out of the qualified plan. So out of your 401k or your traditional IRA. And guess what, guys? Everybody's got to pay what? Taxes mm-hmm. at that point. That's what's going to happen. So the very beast that you're trying to avoid is what you're going to do in the first step is pay taxes. And then when you think about the pitch of taking it out over four or five years, as opposed to taking that sum of money out over your lifetime, then obviously you're going to compress that that amount of tax that's going to be paid because Mm -hmm. it's going to run you into a higher tax bracket. And then you're going to put it into cash value life insurance. And we can go all day on that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, the the thing is, you've got to think about what your fear is. And in this case, the button that's being pushed is taxes. And if you're scared of that, but the answer then causes you to have to pay really more taxes than what you would have otherwise, then that's probably not the route that you need to go. So if you're going to do that, and let's say the money lands in a cash value life insurance policy, Scott, now you are borrowing that money and you're going to pay interest on that loan. And that interest is going to either come out of your pocket or it's going to reduce the cash value in the life insurance policy. By the way, If you're doing this and you're near retirement, what's the chances of you being able to qualify for life insurance? If you've had some type of, uh, you know, health event that would keep you from being able to qualify for life insurance, or maybe you have a condition that would rate you, meaning that you have to pay more for insurance, then more money goes to the insurance company and less goes to you. Guys, do you ever want to borrow your own money? I don't think so. Yeah, that's never made sense to me. And Mm. I understand the comeback of, but you're paying yourself interest. Well, if this money was in my IRA before, then I could have been earning interest from my investments and not have to pull out of the IRA, pay taxes, then put it in a life insurance policy that I may or may not even qualify for, and then pay myself interest to borrow my own money. The details here are important, Janet. If you think about what the right strategy would be, it might be to incrementally do Roth conversions as you get down the road toward retirement, so more and more of your money is in a tax-free position. And we regularly do that. Um, But, guys, one of the other things that we look at that this – 
this fear tactic strategy does not even consider is the impact on your Medicare premiums. When, when you get to this point, if you're bringing out a large amount of money from your IRA or your 401k, that counts as income. It'll put you into a higher income bracket and your premiums are going to be more. Let me also say that, you know, there is no strategy that is born of trying to avoid taxes that's a certainty because, frankly, the, the Congress gave you the Roth IRA. They can take the Roth IRA away from you. Now, I think there would be a riot that, you know, and I say that very loosely. I think a lot of people would be very, very upset right. over the change in Roth IRAs. But look what happened with the stretch IRA. They, they basically gave the stretch IRA to us years and years ago. Then they took it away for non-spouse beneficiaries. Congress giveth and Congress taketh away. That, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. So I think that this whole thing of trying to be beat the IRS is frankly a, a fool's game because they make the rules and they if you change something then they're going to change something and then we'll change something and they change something and it's just a game that that is being played but secondly you don't need to be lured into buying some financial product that has questionable value to you in order to try to quote unquote beat the IRS when when you run the numbers on it it has nothing to, to your advantage of beating the IRS, because if the money's qualified, you've got to pay taxes on it anyway. Well, and again, guys, I would say that if you've had this, you know, for quite a few years, as most people do on their 401ks, you have, quote unquote, beaten the IRS. Now, it's per the rules that are allowed. But it, mm -hmm. what I'm telling you is you've had growth year after year, probably for decades, and you've not paid a dime on taxes on that throughout all of those years, not to mention the deduction that you first got. You've already won the game. It's just your time when you start withdrawing, it's your time to start paying some in taxes, but not too much. Well, you guys have picked this apart very well, but just to kind of summarize, first of all, I go back to what you said, Janet, about the $700,000 401k, right? When you take it out over time to supplement your social security, your right. overall tax burden is, of course, going to be less than if you took it all out at once, especially if you're doing it in the last year of your work life before you go into retirement, maybe you and your spouse made $150,000, $200,000 that year. If you took $700,000 mm -hmm. out in that year, it is all stacked on on top of that one hundred fifty and two hundred thousand dollars that you already made, putting you in a higher tax bracket. So that's never a good idea. And then, John, to your point, you can't avoid paying taxes in retirement, but you can minimize, and that's part of the strategy. Yeah, you you do have to obviously take a look at at what you're doing and do it smartly. You have to think about okay. When do I want to sequence certain assets? Do I want to take assets that are non-qualified assets, maybe savings investments that are not pre-tax investments? Do you want to mix that in? Do you want to take that early and allow some deferral to take place? Or better yet, do you want to bleed off some of that IRA money early in your retirement so you don't get these huge, large, uh, required minimum distributions that uh, you'd have to pay at 72 if you had deferred taxation? on that money uh, as some people would. So I think that there's a lot of options there, Scott. Obviously, you've got to understand the taxation on Social Security. There is a certain strata of Social Security that is not taxed at all or a certain income level where Social Security is not taxed, a certain income level where Social Security is only 50% taxable, 50% tax-free, and a certain income level where 15% of your Social Security is tax-free, 80%, 85% subject to tax. So it really does take a very careful analysis of what you're doing in terms of blending that income and the tax-free nature of some income to be able to uh, come out better than you would if you just took it willy-nilly. Ultimately, it's not about beating the IRS. It's about spendable income right. in retirement. And if you want to know if you're on track for a successful retirement, you can visit 15minuteretirement.com. That's 15minuteretirement.com. Or text the word CHECKUP to 501 381 5228 to get your free checkup. The Get Ready for the Future show continues right after this. We understand that financial planning can seem overwhelming or intimidating. Often people say they feel like they don't know enough to get started or that maybe they feel like they're bad with money altogether. But let's consider this a little differently. If my car were to break down today, I wouldn't have a clue how to fix it. 
and I wouldn't feel any shame or embarrassment at going to a mechanic that I trust to take care of it for me because I know they've spent their career learning how to take care of vehicles and they're gonna be able to fix it. The same is true for your finances. Our team has spent our careers studying money and studying retirement income planning so that we can help empower you. We don't expect you to walk in the door knowing anything. So it's not that you're bad at planning. How could you be bad at something you've never learned? What makes you great at planning is knowing when to bring a team on that you can trust to guide you to and through retirement. If you're ready to get started, we're here for you. We're ready to start with you. Contact us today. Want more straight talk about retirement, investments, and your money? Listen to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now back to the Get Ready for the Future show. There is always a Genwell Financial Advisor ready to sit down with you. And if at any point uh, during this program or any time during the next week you think it's time to make that call, all you have to do is dial 501 653 7355. Again, the number is 501 653 7355. Or you can reach out via email info at getreadyforthefuture.com. And Anna Olive, our client introductory specialist, will reach out to you and seat you with a, an advisor near you who is best suited to meet your needs. We have offices in Conway, West Little Rock, Bryant, Hot Springs, El Dorado, and Northwest Louisiana. Exposing the promises of safety and comfort when it comes to your retirement, your finances, your investments. And we talked about taxes in the last segment and how you cannot avoid taxes in retirement. You can only create a a plan to minimize them. Well, this one in this segment is about the market and the fear tactics that are deployed there. And if you think about it, you know, I, uh, I've used this before on the show, but I remember the late, great Paul Eels. And every week before the Razorbacks would play, guys, somebody would ask him who's going to win the game. And every week, you know what Paul said? He said the Razorbacks were going to win the game. Well, sure. And Paul was right more often than he was wrong, but he was wrong a lot because he <laughs> was stuck to that. And the saying goes, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? So yep. you hear all the fear mongering, all the, regardless of the market conditions right now, the market has been booming since uh, the COVID drawback last March. Well, what do you hear? Oh, it's at all-time highs. Oh, it's at all-time highs. It can't go much higher. But if the market was down, what would we be hearing see we told you see we told you and yep. but it is yeah. always out there chirping that the market is going to crash scott you know i've been in the financial industry for 33 years and you know how many years i've heard <laughs> that we're going to hell in a handcart 33 years 33 years yeah. it always has been this way there are always reasons not to invest your money now you can come up with with 10 of them but one of them is good enough you know but but you have to understand that this is a a chorus that is coming from people that have a vested interest in trying to to lure you to put money into something that is safe so you can sleep at night and not worry about the market mm. but i think you have to wonder about what kind of worry do you really need to have? What kind of worry, what kind of concern do you need to have? And Janet, I think it really is, uh, you have to have a complete understanding of risk. They're yeah. talking about one kind That's of right. risk. That's right. And there are really three risks, and we've talked about these a lot, but I don't I don't think that it soaks in with people until you can see it in your plan. I don't think that it really just hits home. But there are three risks that you have to address in your personal retirement planning. One of them, I obviously is market risk. That's the one that everybody thinks about. It's very visible. Another one is longevity. Now, we don't think about living too long as a risk, but when you're talking about how much of your assets you're going to need to, to utilize throughout those years, it does become a risk. And then the third one, and that's really where we're going to focus right now, is inflation. Inflation is a sneaky, sneaky thing. It doesn't, you know, just pop up all of a sudden that, you know, last week milk was a dollar and now it's $5. It doesn't happen like that. But you ask your grandparents what they paid for a loaf of bread compared to what we pay for it now, and mm -hmm. you'll see inflation. Inflation is going to be a reality in your retirement. And guys, I've never seen this play out to the extent that I did in a, in a plan recently. 
had the opportunity to meet with a couple that, frankly, they're very focused on market risk. Well, what do you do when you're focused on market risk? You go to, quote unquote, safe investments, meaning that they are safe and protected from market risk. But when you leave one risk completely, you are accepting another risk completely. And so they had left behind market risk and chosen to accept inflation risk, not knowingly. They were just trying to be safe with their money. So guys, as you know, we use a lot of software programs and one of the programs that we use will run a thousand different trials based on the investments that you have and all the facts that are put into the plan. It'll run 1,000 trials to say, okay, under what circumstances would this work or would it not work? How many times would this be successful? This couple has two Social Security checks and a pension. So they've got a good, solid base of income. But guys, when I plugged in their current situation as far as their investments, which is all cash-based money market type instruments, they had zero percent probability of success in their retirement. I've never seen that before. It, and that's because they have no growth opportunity to take care of inflation. And just by changing their allocation from all cash to income with capital preservation, and guys, that's about as conservative as it gets and not still be sitting all in literally in cash. So to go that route and reallocate some of those dollars took them from 0% probability of success to 96% probability of success. Hmm. What that tells me is something we've known for years. We know that you have to have some market exposure in order to beat inflation risk. It's just hard to accept the reality that there is an inflation risk. It's hard to see it. But guys, they went from, out of a 1,000 trials, 0% chance of success to 960 out of a 1,000 times, this will work for you. And in the short term, Scott, if you want to really see inflation, think about what a 2 by 4 cost pre-COVID <laughs> right. and what a 2 by 4 yep. costs now. It's yeah. about 40 or 50% more yep. money. And I guarantee you they're not going back down all the way to where they were pre-COVID when this is kind of passed. Here's the bottom line. If you think about it, real estate and equities are the only two asset classes that have – uh, perennially beat inflation over the long term. It is Those are the two asset classes that advisors use the most to try to keep people ahead of inflation. And you think about the effect of inflation. If you are paying, let's say, uh, $2 for a cup of coffee today, at just a 3% inflation rate, that cup of coffee will cost you $3.81, nearly double the cost in 20 years. So it's against that backdrop that you can kind of understand the risk that you run into when you put your money in these safe investments that don't keep pace with inflation. Prices are going up and your buying power is going down. So you want to try to avoid that and you have to be able to utilize things in their proper proportion. Mm -hmm. So let's let's think about this, Scott. If you think about the short-term risk that is uh, evident in the market, statistics show that uh, if you take a look at the S&P 500, there's about a 70 percent chance in any given year that you're going to make money and about 25 percent chance that you're going to lose money. So three out of four times you're going to make money, one out of four times you're going to lose, and, and you want to try to avoid that loss if you possibly can. But what you've got to understand is that equities are a long-term investment. And to that point, go out 10 years and you see that history shows that the threat of a negative return after 10 years is less than 6 percent in the S&P 500. So 10-year rolling period, only 6% of any 10-year rolling period that you want to take a look at is negative. Go out 16 years. 16 years, there is not a negative return on equities. So you want to use short-term safe investments for short-term money. You want to use longer-term equity investments for longer-term money. And be sure that you are uh, in a plan that allows you to keep pace with inflation with your income. That is the key to a happy retirement is that you can have a risk-adjusted and inflation-adjusted income. And, and a portfolio that is risk adjusted as well. There are folks that we still meet with that uh, have been very leery and maybe even didn't get back in the market because of the financial crisis in 2008. And you think about if you did that 15 years ago, uh, you had invested in a, a fixed income investment that mirrored the Barclays short term bond index. That's just a measurement of many bonds. You would have had a cumulative rate of return of just under 40 percent 
That's equating to about 2.6% per year. That doesn't sound like it's keeping up with inflation. But even if you think back to the financial crisis, 15 years ago was just before the start of the financial crisis, which, of course, was arguably one of the worst starting points for investing in equities given the downturn that followed. But the results, 15 years later, again, this is before the big drop, right? Before the 40 plus percent drop of late 2008. An investment reflecting the returns of the S&P 500 would have gained a cumulative return of 325.99% or an average annually of 20% per year. So you think about how bad if you would have gotten in with all of your money in the S&P 500 at the top of the market in 2008, and then it went to the bottom in March of 2009, we're still up 325% from that mark. Scott, it really is all about what fear you need to be fearful of or what risk you need to be fearful of. Yes, you need to understand market risk and use it, uh, use market based investments appropriately. If you use a market based investment and you need that money in a year, then shame on your financial advisor for giving you that advice. If you need that investment in 15 years, then hooray for your financial advisor for giving you that advice because that is a proper use of an equity investment. If you use short-term interest rate based money uh, and at low interest rates at that in these days, and you need that money 10 or 15 or 20 years down the road, you probably have made a mistake because you're not going to be able to, to buy the same stuff with it that you could buy today. And guys, this is where the, the bucketing strategy that we use in retirement comes into play because people tend to think about retirement as a, a stop sign. Okay, I'm 65. I need access to all my money. No, you don't need access to all of it. You need access to the portion that you need for this month's income and next month for that month's income, etc. So you have a portion of your dollars that needs to be invested conservatively because it's short-term money. And then you have some that's a little bit more moderate term, like we might use real estate in that scenario, and then a little bit more long-term that you're going to use 20 or 25 years into retirement. So the, the challenge that people have is thinking about retirement as I'm either in the market or out of the market. You ha- you need to have buckets of money for different time periods, and that allows us to do, guys, what we've been talking about here. When you look back that 15 years or even, even just 12 years to the low point in March of 2009, if you look where we are now from that low point to, to this point, we would just be into that, that secondary bucket, that moderate bucket. We still would not have gotten to the long-term bucket which is the one that would have seen the most impact during the Great Recession. So it really does alleviate those fears. I would say set your fears aside, and and we've talked about a lot, the antidote to fear is education. So if you can understand the reason we take the approach that we do, it makes sense, and you can set those fears aside and go on with retirement. Remember when we said in the last segment you can't avoid taxes in retirement with pre-tax money. You can't avoid risk in retirement. If right. you, you can avoid market risk, but then you are assuming inflation risk. You have to manage risk. If you'd like to know if you're on track for successful retirement, don't forget to visit 15minuteretirement.com. That's 15minuteretirement.com or text the word checkup to 501-381-5228 to get your free checkup. We're back in a moment. A game warden noticed how a particular fellow named Sam consistently caught more fish than anyone else. The successful fisherman invited the game warden to come along with him and observe. So the next morning, the two fellows met at the dock and took off in Sam's boat. When they got to the middle of the lake, Sam stopped the boat and the warden sat back to see how it was done. Sam's approach was really simple. He took out a stick of dynamite, lit it, and threw it in the air. The explosion rocked the lake with such a force that dead fish immediately began to surface. Sam took out a net and started scooping them up. Well, you can imagine the reaction of the game warden. When he recovered from the shock of it all, he began yelling at Sam. He said, hey buddy, you can't do this. I'll put you in jail. You'll be paying every fine there is in the book. The game warden was just incredulous. Sam, meantime, just simply sat down his net, took out another stick of dynamite. He lit it, tossed it this time in the lap of the game warden with these words. Are you gonna sit there all day complaining or are you going to fish? 
for some of us, the same question could be asked about our retirement. This is John Shrewsbury with Genwealth Financial Advisors. Whether it's trying to find the best investment or just worrying about the stock market, A lot of folks seem frozen with retirement indecision, and that very well could lead to an explosion of your own, an explosion of your dreams for a comfortable future. Plan now for your time on the lake or wherever your dreams take you. know there are a ton of financial resources on GetReadyForTheFuture.com? No? Well, bookmark that page for later because the Get Ready For The Future show is back. Exposing the promises of safety and comfort in your retirement. And we've been doing that all show long today on the Get Ready For The Future show, talking about the avoidance of taxes in retirement. Can you really do that? Or does it really come down to minimizing taxes with an overall investment strategy? And then we talked about risk in the last segment. You can avoid market risk, but then you assume inflation risk, that you won't be able to keep your buying power through many, many years in retirement, which could potentially be decades without a raise in your income. You have to manage the risk. You can't entirely avoid it. And all this points to where we go almost every week, but it doesn't change the fact that it is still true. You need a plan, an overall diverse plan for your retirement. It is not about one product. It is not about one magic bullet that is going to, one move you make that is going to make your retirement perfect. It is about an overall retirement income strategy that is diversified in its investment strategy. That's the you know th- this we've made a case today, guys, for diversification. We we talk about that, and I think investors hear that all the time, and they go, they really don't even necessarily know what that entirely entails. But we've made the case for it here today. All your eggs in one basket is not the route to go. History shows that that is really a bad route to go. And and if anybody says hey, I've got the magic bullet, run, because they're probably going to shoot you with that bullet if you're not careful. (laughs) I I just have seen this over and over and over in my career. And people, you know, go down this cul-de-sac and they can't get out. And it is literally like Hotel California. You check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. And so, Scott, I think the question is now, what should investors do? I think that obviously we've made the case and a very strong case for not listening to these merchants of fear. But what's an investor to do? Well, at GenWealth, we believe in balance. Balance is is essential in life. It is essential in investing. It is essential in retirement. There is a time and a place for virtually any type of investment product that you might want used in the right way. You have to think about it this way. The risk of so-called risk-free investments is the effect of inflation over the long term. Therefore, we believe in using fixed income investments in the short term because that provides the safety that you need for money that you're going to need next week, next month, or next year, or even a couple of years down the road. But as you go out further, your risk temperature has got to go up. And that's where you begin to blend in some equities and blend in some rate of return so you can keep pace with inflation. It's not your overall risk temperature. It's it's risk with the market. And I think it's critical important for you as an investor to begin to distinguish the different types of risk and make and making sure that you are addressing inflation risk longevity risk and market risk not just looking at one of them yeah I think it's important too to point out that you do need some guarantees in retirement yes. there's no question yeah. about that we believe the guarantee lies in the required income that you're going to need to pay your expenses in retirement so where are you going to get your guarantees Social Security is a big part of that. Maximizing your Social Security benefit is huge. Selecting the right pension election, if that is in uh, your uh, portfolio, if you will, or that is an option for you, if you have a pension available to you. And then if there is not enough from those sources, a portion of your assets can buy a guaranteed income. 
L- let me back up to the pension for just a moment. Um, depending on where you work, that might not be a, a, an overly complicated conversation. Uh, but guys, I, I worked on a case recently, a plan where there were, when we got all of the pension information, there were over 20 pages of you could do this and then you could do that and then just all the different choices. And as a 20 year plus veteran of the industry, you know, I, I'm able to go through that and go, okay, if we do this, here's the consequence and here's how it works inside the plan. But if you think about just the typical retiree, they do something else for a living, not this. And so their experience is in another area. And to go through that many pages of pension information and to not necessarily know the consequences of those decisions, that's a frightening situation. So if you're, if you're even facing a pension decision, be sure you contact an advisor who can go through that with you and help you make a wise decision for your long-term retirement. Scott, balance is really what it's all about. Retirement is not about chasing the highest rate of return, nor is it about putting all of your money under a rock and just being sure that you can look under that rock and you got the same amount of money as you had when you started. That is really not how you do retirement. Retirement and and fear is never a good investment strategy, especially for long-term investment objectives. Anyone who has ever bet long-term on the American economy has won, and folks that have bet against the American economy have lost. I still have faith in the American economy, even though it's a mess right now as far as COVID and all the borrowing and all that type of thing is concerned. American ingenuity has overcome a whole lot. It's overcome world wars. It's overcome uh, depressions. It's overcome a lot of things. And you've got to believe that the American ingenuity is always going to provide good returns for you in the long term on the market. Guys, let's talk about the Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process and how that is different than the fearful tactics that might be out there that might be getting your attention. We just want to go through this systematically and logically and create a plan that fits for you and makes sense in your situation. So the process is going to cover seven different areas. Let's talk through those a little bit. It's going to cover investment strategy. It's going to cover social security maximization. That can be a six-figure difference for you just claiming in the right way for your social security we're also going to cover guaranteed income and if we have a need to fill in any gap we'll help you with that but being sure that you have enough guaranteed income to cover your required expenses it's going to protect against inflation and provide uh, for your lifestyle income so your desired income on top of the required income address any long-term care needs if we need to do that for you in your plan reducing taxes during retirement to the extent that it is reasonable and logical so that you're not incurring them at one time to avoid them at another and that putting you in a worse situation but we'll walk through that process with you and then this is key it's all documented written down on paper on purpose so that we can revisit that throughout the years update it as needed and it is personalized to you i'll tell you one thing that you'll never hear from gen wealth we're never going to come on here and say like i'll use gold as an example buy gold you know what I don't know if you need gold or not because I haven't met you. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your needs are. That personalization to you of the thousands of plans that we have prepared here at GenWealth, there are not any two of them that are alike because there are not any two families who have walked in our door with the exact same need. Scott, I would say that if you really want to do better than most folks as far as retirement is concerned, get a financial plan, get a retirement income plan. There are less than 30% of the people who are headed into retirement actually have a written, documented retirement income plan. Now think about that. You have a written, documented plan for just about everything. I got a, a, a new shaver the other day, and <laughs> there was all these instructions in 15 different languages in it. And I was like, holy cow, you know, this is way more than what most people have to guide them through retirement. And this is just me plugging the shaver in and getting busy with it. Yeah. You know, I, the, the key is having a written, on paper, on purpose, retirement income plan. 
If you don't have that plan, then you do not have a, a, a method by which you're going to distribute money to you in retirement. Having an account is not the same as having a plan. Having a set of investments is not the same as having a plan. Janet has basically gone through the Gen Wealth Ready to Retire process, those seven points. Yes. You need those seven points. And if you have those seven points, you're way ahead of the game. You know, we talked a lot in this program about fear and, and how the the preying on fear is what a lot uh, gets a lot of people in trouble. But think about why folks don't have a written financial plan. Is it because you're fearful of the answer? Fear of the unknown is huge. We get that, right? But if you don't have an answer when you enter retirement, an answer that is income related, how much are you going to have on a monthly basis to spend? Then how do you know if you're ready? I mean, it is really hard to know without that retirement income plan. Very important. Good stuff today as we talked about uh, exposing the promises uh, that are out there of safety and comfort. And as you hear the final bell there, it is time for our final thoughts. Janet, we'll start with you. So let's talk about how to recognize if a pitch is what we would call snake oil or not. So here's a few key points for you. A lot of times they're going to magnify your fears and take advantage of behavioral biases. So really focusing on fears. Most of the time they're going to urge you to put all of your money, all of your assets in that one investment, whatever it might be. They're going to focus on only one type of risk, like market risk as an example, while ignoring the other risks that can really be just as harmful. And their pitches are delivered to you without any regard to your personal circumstances, needs, or situation. Scott, my th final thought is listen carefully. If you are being uh, having your emotional buttons pushed about fear and risk, then you're probably getting pitched something. And certainly, you don't want a pitch. You want a plan. You want something that is going to last throughout your retirement. You want a methodology that you can go back to when things get uh, dicey, when things get volatile in the markets. You want to be able to go back to the plan and say, okay, I'm ready to go because I anticipated this. My advisor worked with me to anticipate this. If you don't have that written plan, you need to go ahead and get one. Give us a call here at Gen Wealth Financial Advisors. A couple of action steps in my final thoughts. If you want to find out if you're on track for a successful retirement, visit 15minuteretirement.com. That's 15, the numbers, 15minuteretirement.com or text the word checkup to 501 381-5228. That's 501-381-5228 and get your free 15-minute retirement checkup. Or you can call us at Genwell Financial Advisors, 501-653-7355. Again, it's 501-653-7355 to set up a complimentary first appointment with a Genwell Financial Advisor. We are out of time for this week. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. The Gen Wealth Financial Team is available to you 24-7 at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or call our offices at 501-653-7355. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment, and no strategy can assure success. Gen Wealth Financial Advisors is an Arkansas-registered investment advisor with securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC.